more now on Russia's war in Ukraine. Russian leader Vladimir Putin visited Russian-occupied Mariupol in a stunningly defiant move just days after the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for him. According to the Kremlin, Putin arrived in Mariupol by helicopter and then drove himself around the city's, quote-unquote, memorial sites, concert hall, and coastline. Joining me now on set is Rear Admiral John Kirby, White House National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications. Admiral Kirby, uh, welcome back to the summit. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for being here. You bet. Good to be with you. So let's talk about um, Vladimir Putin's trip, surprise visit to, to Ukraine, um, I think a day or two after that ICC arrest warrant. What do you make of, of that visit? I think Senator Kane uh, really summed it up quite well there just a few minutes ago. I mean, this is, uh, first of all, it's not uncommon for Putin to go to Ukraine and that Russia occupied territories and, and visit the, the battlefield. But it's certainly an indication, I think, that he knows he's not doing so well militarily there. And he's going up there to sort of buck up the war effort uh, domestically inside uh, Russia uh, and to try to make a, at least a visible case to the world uh, that he's in control, he's in command, things are going to, you know, go well or will go well in the future. So I think it's it's a lot of propaganda. Uh, also, I, I find it curious that he, he is there now after visits by the U.S. Attorney General, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, the President of the United States, which, as I recall, the last time we, we spoke <laughs> was <laughs> just before that surprise visit um, surprised us all. Um, do you think that that's part of it, that all these Americans, high American officials have shown up in Ukraine? He has to show up in Ukraine. It, it could be. Uh, it, it could be related to that. But I really do think it's more an indication that uh, that he's trying to buck up his own domestic right. populace and the, po and, the, and the opinion in Russia. He knows that his military is underperforming. And that's really putting it politely. Mm -hmm. uh, and he knows that there's increasing public pressure at home, certainly as he now talks about having to mobilize more uh, troops, um, even do, you know, conscription again. Uh, so I think he's he's trying to shore up his uh, his domestic base there and, a, and a put, as, as the senator said, put a brave face on right. uh, what really has been um, a, a terrible showing by his military. And this visit and this his visit to Ukraine comes just before an expected visit in Moscow by the Chinese president, right. Xi Jinping, in Moscow. Is President Xi going there as a sort of show of support for Vladimir Putin, or is the president, President Xi, going there for a come to Jesus meeting? with Vladimir Putin over his conduct of his war on Ukraine. I think we're going to have to wait and see how they characterize this meeting over the next uh, few days. Uh, it is clear uh, that Mr. Putin has been at least tacitly supporting, I'm sorry, Mr. Xi has been uh, tacitly supporting Mr. Putin through this war. They haven't condemned the invasion. They haven't enforced the sanctions. Uh, they've they've uh, actually used the, the Russian propaganda, the justification for this war is the, the pressure of the West and, uh, and the existential threat to, to, uh, to Russia, which is, of course, nonsense. Uh, but he has also, President Xi, publicly uh, upbraided the, the execution of this war by Mr. Putin uh, just a few months ago um, uh, during the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting. So it'll be interesting to see how he puts himself out there as a result of this meeting. The one thing I will say, though, Jonathan, is... The, you have to keep in mind that this visit comes in the context of a recent 12-point so-called peace proposal that China put forward. And so one of the things we'll be looking for is whether Mr. Xi talks about the need for a ceasefire. Uh, and we've been publicly uh, saying that that is just not acceptable. Uh, a ceasefire right now, if that's what's called for as a result of this meeting, uh, might sound good. You know, because people will stop fighting. But what it does is it ratifies Russia's conquests on the ground. It, it sort of freezes where they are and legitimizes that. It also could give Mr. Putin time to refit, retrain, reman, um, and then restart operations at a time and place of his choosing. It basically sides with Russia, any call for a ceasefire right now. And we've also said that we want Mr. Xi to, to talk to President Zelensky. He hasn't done that yet. We think it's really important particularly as he gets ready now to spend three days with Mr. Putin, uh, that he also spend some time with President Zelensky and get the Ukrainian perspective on this war. Uh, we are out of time, but I cannot let you go since you're a uh, retired rear admiral. And just get your thoughts on, on this day, the 20th anniversary of the yeah. start of the war, uh, uh, the, the Iraq War. 4,550 troops 
4,550 families uh, that are forever changed by that war. Uh, we'll always have an empty seat at the table. Um, I, I recognize there's lots of arguments uh, about the war, but I, don't, I think here as we mark 20 years of it that we don't forget the toll that it took on those families, not to mention the ones who did come back alive but came back forever changed because that's going to be a generational, generational issue for the United States, and we can't forget the sacrifices that all of them made and that their families, Jonathan, are still making. we got to stay with them.